All right, so now let's take a look at a real data set. So I'm going to open my folder, Power Query Essentials, and I will open this number three, Merge Queries 3. So just like the first Merge Queries data set that we looked at, it has to do with some transactions and then some cities. Now, since we are going to be matching these two queries together, based on the CT column for us to do our merge queries. The idea behind this merge, once again, is for me to bring in two extra columns here for region and for states. And those two columns are going to come from the cities query. However, I will have to do a matching based on the column for city that we have on the two sides. However, even though I'll be matching with the city column, in my transactions table, one of the cities that I have here is Dallas. However, in the other query that I'll be merging with, when you check through every value that we have in the city column, we don't have Dallas. On the other hand, in this table that I want to use to do my merging of queries, you are going to see that one of the cities I have here is Houston. But when you check on my transactions table, I don't have any city for Houston. So I'm going to import these two data into my Power Query, and we're going to see all the different options of joint kind that we have. So because I'm already here inside of Power Query, if I want to bring in any new data set, I will have to go and click on my new source button. So I will select my new source and I will select Excel workbook. Then I want to connect to my number three file, merge queries number three. I will click open. And I want to connect to cities and transactions. Now, this is one other behavior of Power Query that you want to note. So in my current Power Query editor, I already have queries named cities and transactions. And then I'm importing another set of data into my Power Query that are also named cities and transactions. So what Power Query will do by default is to put a suffix of two for the new ones that are coming in since they are already existing queries with those exact names. So I'll just go ahead and tick the boxes for the cities and the transactions. And when I click OK, I should have two new queries, cities 2 and transactions 2. And as always, I have to go to the cities 2 query because I need to use the first row of that data as the data header. So I'll go to my transform tab and I will select use first row as headers. Then I will go back to my transactions too, and I will carry out my merge queries. On the home tab, towards the extreme right of my Power Query ribbon, I can click on the merge queries drop down and select merge queries. And I want to merge transactions too with cities too. And to complete my merging, I want to use the city column as my matching column or as my key column. So you are going to see that we have an option here to select our join kind. And by default, Power Query has the left outer as the default join kind. And you are going to see the left outer in brackets all from first matching from second which means everything in the transactions query or in the transaction data is going to be a part of our output after we complete this merge so which means that we are prioritizing the left table now if you remember on the left table we have some data sets that are from the dallas city but we don't have dallas as part of our cities on the right table so what happens to those data sets? Are we going to keep them or not? We are going to keep those data for Dallas because we are using left outer, which means we are prioritizing the first query. So with left outer now, if I click OK to do this merge, by the time I expand this cities column and I bring in the states and the region and I click OK, you are going to see that everything on the left table is still included in the final output of the merge, despite the fact that we cannot get the states 
and we cannot get the region for two of the values that happen to be data from Dallas. But because we are using left outer, we are still going to keep that particular data. So I'll come to my apply steps area and I will go over to the step where I carried out my merging of queries. So I can right click on my merge query step and select edit settings, which brings me back this dialog box. So now I want to change the join kind from left outer to inner. So inner is only matching rows which means we are going to keep only those rows that match. So for example, in the transactions query, we have Dallas as part of the data. However, there is no Dallas in the cities query that we are matching or that we are merging with. So when I click OK and I expand these cities, or I think I already have that expanded in the last step. So if I go to that last step, expanded cities, you are going to see that every information that is kept are only the ones that can be found. So if I come to my cities column here, you won't find Dallas here. So simply because there is no Dallas on the other query, if I use inner, there won't be Dallas on this query either. So that's number two. So let's go back to the merge queries one more time. Right click, edit settings, and I'm going to change my join kind now to write outer. When I change it to write outer, it means I want to prioritize the city's query. Now, if you remember on the city's query, we have a city for Houston that doesn't have any data set in the transactions. Okay, so if I use write outer and I click OK, by the time we go to the expanded cities, which is the last step there, you are going to see that when I scroll to the right hand side, we have an extra state and an extra region that has to do with the Houston, which doesn't have data in the transactions table. So that's why you see an extra row that shows nulls for every column in the left side, which is the transactions table. And because we don't have Houston, we are still able to bring in the state and the region for Houston, even though it doesn't appear on the transactions table. So that's our right outer now, prioritizing the right hand side table. One more time, we go back to the merge queries, right click, edit settings, and we are going to select another option of join kind. This is where we go with the full outer option. So full outer says all rows from both sides, which means when we do this or when we complete this merging of queries, since we have Dallas in the transactions table, we are going to have it as part of our output, even though we will not be able to import the state and the region because it doesn't exist. On the other hand, we are also going to have Houston when we complete this merge, even though there is no data for it in the transactions table, we will still be able to bring in the state and the region for Houston. So if I go ahead to select full outer, which is all rows from both, when I click OK, if I go to my expanded cities, you are going to see that I have some nulls here, which represent the two dollars that we have in the transaction data, but because we don't have dollars in the city's data, it shows null because we cannot find the state and the region. On the other hand, because in the city's data, we have Houston and the state and the region for Houston is Texas and Central, we are able to bring in the state and the region for Houston, even though it doesn't have data on the transaction side. So technically, when you think about it, you will see that full outer is simply a combination of left outer and right outer. That's what makes it a full outer. So let's go and check what we have for the antis. So if I right click on my merge queries and I go to edit settings, if I change this join kind to left anti, it shows rows only in first, that is rows that appear in the first query that does not appear in the second query. And that means when I expand this, I should have information for the Dallas queries only. And when I go to right click, edit settings, 
to do a check on right and tie that is rows on the right table that do not appear on the left table which happens to be that Houston row for Texas and Central if I click OK you are going to see that we'll be left with just one row and that row is the row that has the Houston data sets with Texas State and Central region.